check the three of Mishnah 15. For certain sins, the Torah prescribes the heavenly punishment of Karas. If a person commits one of these sins, but is warned before he commits it, that he will be punished with Malchus for the transgression, he is given Malchus. The Mishnah discusses whether he is punished with Karas as well. Any people who committed sins for which they are liable to Karas, who are given Malchus for that transgression, they become exempt from their Karas. Once they are given Malchus, the heavenly court forgives their sin, and they do not receive Karas. As it is stated in Deuteronomy 25.3, He shall hit him forty times, and your brother will be disgraced before your eyes. This teaches that once he receives Malchus and has thus been disgraced, he is like your brother. That is, his sin has been completely atoned for. These are the words of Rabbi Hanania ben Gamliel. The Mishnah contrasts the punishment of Karas with the reward for doing mitzvahs. Rabbi Hanania ben Gamliel said, Now, if when a person commits a single sin punishable by Karas, God takes his life as punishment for the sin, i.e. he is given Karas, when someone does a single mitzvah, how much more so should his life be given to him as a reward? Since the reward for mitzvahs is always greater than the punishment for sins, if a person can lose his life as the result of a sin, surely he will be given life as the result of a mitzvah. The next Tana says that this lesson does not need to be deduced through logic, since it is taught by verses in the Torah. Rabbi Shimon says this lesson is learned from its place, i.e. from the verses in the Torah that discuss the punishment of Karas. For it is stated in Leviticus 18.29, the people who commit the sins of forbidden relationships, relationships will receive karas, etc. And earlier, when introducing this passage, it is stated in verse 5 there, you must keep my statutes and my laws, which a person shall do and by which he shall live. The Torah thus states that while a person who transgresses these sins is given karas, a person who keeps these laws is rewarded with life by which he shall live. Moreover, although the verse mentions laws which a person shall do, it goes on to discuss the sins of forbidden relationships, which are prohibitions, laws that a person may not do. By referring to prohibitions as laws which a person shall do, the Torah implies that by keeping these prohibitions and avoiding sin, a person is considered to have done a law, i.e. a mitzvah. This teaches that if someone merely sits still and does not commit a sin when he is tempted to do so, heaven gives him the same reward as someone who actually performs a mitzvah and he will thus be rewarded with life. Another teaching about the reward for avoiding sin. Rabbi Shimon Bar Rabbi says, the Torah states in Deuteronomy 12, verse 23 and 25, just be strong not to eat the blood of an animal because the blood is the life, etc., so that it will be good for you and your children after you. The Torah thus promises reward to someone who does not eat blood. Now, if when it comes to blood from which a person has a natural disgust, nevertheless, Someone who refrains from eating it receives reward for himself and his children after him. Then when it comes to the sins of stealing and forbidden relationships, which a person naturally desires and longs for, if someone refrains from committing them, how much more so will he merit reward for himself, for his descendants and for his descendants' descendants, to the end of all generations?